ask it is. It is 7 o'clock on one and 6.59 on the other. <laughs> Welcome to Real Life Church Men's Meeting. How's everybody doing? Awesome. So good, good to see your guys' faces. Blessed I'm alive. <laughs> That's right. So we have uh, the men's meeting uh, tonight, and the next men's meeting will be the 21st of October. This is a ministry of Real Life Church and Kurt Owen Ministries, and we're just really excited you're here. I love being here. I love being able to come and fellowship with everybody and hear the word, get it implanted, have that seed planted, get, get some seed time and harvest, right? We have an awesome, awesome, awesome message about hope tonight, right? Um, so, Let's put on our calendars. We got the, uh, the, the men's advanced conference coming up as well. If you haven't um, registered for that, please do because seats are running out. This is a popular event. I was here last year and it was my first event and it was so awesome. It was so awesome. We have some awesome speakers. Pastor Aaron is coming from the uh, West Coast again. and He's going to be here with uh, Pastor Kurt and it's going to be talking about taking your place as men, and I think that's going to be an important thing to do, to take our place in ministry, take our place in the church as husbands, as brothers, as men in the church, it's something that's, that's very much needed, right? So please make sure you go on, it's on Eventbrite, what's going to go on the Kurt Owen, KOM.com or reallifechurch.com, and you can get on there and register with Eventbrite, it's a $25 registration fee, but talk to me or anybody here if you can't afford it. We want you to come. We don't want you to be discouraged. We have people that are donating so you can come. Anybody online, welcome online, by the way. We love you. Um, so, so if you can't afford that, let us know. We want to sow into your life as well. We don't want anything to discourage you from coming to the Men's Advanced Conference because it's going to be awesome. It will change your life, okay? <clears throat> so uh, because of that, we're going to have a uh, little meeting right after church this Sunday. James wants to get together with some of the men. He wants to talk to you, uh, get, to, get all hands on deck. We want to be a blessing to the men that come. So we're, he's going to kind of express some needs that he may have. So we're going to be able to fill and help him out, be a blessing to him and Pastor Kurt and who's going to be here so we can uh, get together and link arms and do that with each other. Okay, so that's going to be this Sunday after church, I don't know how long it'll be, but it'll be worth it, whatever it will, will be, so we can uh, help him out, right? Uh, let's see. We also have the minister's conference. If anybody wants to come to the minister's conference, if you have a call on your life as a pastor, a minister, a lay person in the church, whether you're online, whether you're here in the church, please come to that. Like Once again, last year was my first men's meet or minister's conference that I was able to go to, and it, it was phenomenal. So much accountability there, right? They hold you accountable as pastors. They encourage you. They lift you up. The dates for that is going to be November 2nd through the 5th. We don't have the exact times for that yet. Uh, I think it's going to be the 2nd is a Tuesday, and that's going to be through the Saturday, and then the 6th will be that Sunday. So, Make sure you come to that. If you have any kind of calling on your life, register and get... Uh, when will that be available to register? Do you know? I'm not sure if you're able to register, but we'll, <clears throat> we'll continue to announce that as a church. So online here, if you, if you want to uh, register for that, we'll continue to keep you updated on that. Um, and also, Pastor Kurt is on Gospel Truth TV, if you don't know. So please tune in with that, because that's, that's a... He's, his thing is he wants to sow seed of the Word of God into your life, and that's doing that all of the time. And, and, and man, I tell you, it, it, if you, if you apply it to your life and you do it, you're changing. You have, you, have, you, you have no choice. You have to change when you get the Word in your life about tonight. You know, what? don't just listen to the message, but do the message, right? Um, and and I, I, just, as, just as a bit of encouragement, I love this man right here. And he's always encouraging us. And he's, as a man, talking to us men about being who we can be as men of God. 
And when we hear this, whether it's Minister Michael, Minister James, or whoever it is, our goal in our life is to minister to you and plant the seed of the Word of God in your life. And just don't just take it and go home and do nothing with it. Apply it to your life. That's when it becomes the Word of God in your life. That's when it, it changes you and it becomes the ability to break those bondages and freeze you. It literally frees you, right? So um, in, in my hope, I don't know what he's going to talk about. He asked me to open last month and it kind of tied in. But when I hear, when I think about hope, I had no hope until somebody told me about Jesus Christ Amen. hanging on that cross and freeing me from the sins that just weighed me down and would eventually kill me. The enemy wants me and you dead, but God loved us so much that he gave his son. Now, I don't know how else to explain hope, but to me, that's hope. Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 12, it says, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which which we by which we must be saved. Amen. To me, that's hope. That's hope. There's so many scriptures in the Word of God about hope, but we have to tie that up with faith, right? Like I said, I'm not sure what he's going to be talking about, but no matter what it is, if it's the Word of God, let it get into that good soil, right? We are good soil. If we're children of God, if we're changed by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have good soil, and we're planting that seed, no matter what it is. If we have stony ground, get rid of it. If we have that, that hard, compacted wayside, plow it out and become that good soil and get ready for that, that good soil. What is it? John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. That's hope. That's hope, right? We love you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you make our soil good ground, that the word we're about to receive from the word of God through the Holy Spirit given to Minister James changes our life. And when we hear that word, we take action and we move forward with that word and we allow it to change our life. We can refuse it. But we determine to not refuse your word to Heavenly Father, that what you tell us, we allow the Holy Spirit to change us and move us in a way that we are world changers. And we give, the, give you all the honor. We give you the glory. We cannot do this without you. We understand you can do it without us, but we give you us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Cal Ron.
Hallelujah, Lord. God, we just thank you so much, Father. We thank you, God, that you are our hope, dear Heavenly Father. We just praise you tonight, God. Lord, I ask that you decrease me and increase your spirit within me, Lord. Lord, I just thank you that your word will go forth tonight to help me, Father. God, I just thank you and I give you all the praise. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I ask you to bless each and man underneath the sound of my voice right now, God. That this word would be meditated, penetrated into their system, dear Heavenly Father, and they become doers of this word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. There is hope. I want to again welcome you, you all here tonight. I welcome those that are listening by CD or internet. Um, like Rick, uh, Minister Rick said, we are the men of victory here at Real Life Church in Port St. Lucie, Florida under the director of Minister, uh, I'm sorry, Pastor Kurt and Terry Owens. Um, how many know God is good? God is good. You know, when, when Minister Mike asked me to uh, speak tonight, he had some other things that came up. And Minister Mike, we love you and I just thank you. I was planning on speaking next month. And I had been asking God, you know, Lord, what do you want me to study that I could share with the guys? Well, Minister Mike called me and said, James, you know, and he had already picked the topic and everything. And he said, James, you know, um, he's not going to be able to attend. I need you to fill in. I may know the Bible say, be ye ready. So I was ready. Okay, I told Lord, okay, Lord, it looks like I'll be talking on hope. And let me tell you something, guys. All week long, I've been asking God, show me more about this hope. How many know that, that we use that word hope or have used that word hope or the word hope all kind of ways? All kind of ways. Come on, you know you have. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit. I remember when I was in the world, I used to hope this and hope that the drug man would be there. I hope that this would happen. I hope that this would happen. And when it do happen, you know what I said? Oh, it's just my luck. Or if it didn't happen, it's always oh, just my luck. I used to hope that this would come by and hope that this would bring me some money. Oh, he didn't come. Just my luck. And we, we use hope. We use hope. But hope, in studying this, I found out hope with faith moves things. It moves things. We can say, huh, come on, Holy Spirit. I'm going to calm down because I, when I tell you, it's powerful. When you put hope, you, we already know everybody's here safe, right? Everybody here knows Jesus Christ, right? So now you know that, that by faith, it is, without faith, it is impossible to please God, correct? But let me tell you something. Hope is expectancy, okay? Even when I was in the world, I used hope, what? Expecting. OK, but now that I'm saved, born again, Christian, now that I use hope and grab his friend faith with it. Huh, come on, y'all hear me. Things change. It's no longer luck no more. It's calling those things as though they were knowing, expecting that God can't lie, knowing, expecting that those things will come to pass. So now I change my hope. I expect this to happen. Come on, you hear me? I expect, so stop using your hope so freely and use hope according to the word of God. Speak faith with your hope and expect for it to come to pass. Y'all don't hear me. Expect, you know, because we've we all been there. Man, I hope it don't rain today. You have the, the authority. Come on, you have the authority to speak to that situation. We've talked about this before, but let me tell you, it's some reason God, God wants you to hear it and understand it and, and realize and believe it and walk in it that he gave you the authority along with your faith and your hope you could conquer because he said you're more than conquerors. You know, when studying this, I, I want to, Cameron, can you pull up Romans 5 in the amplifier, please? God showed me this. You know, in hope, there's a cycle. There's a cycle. 
you know, you, 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 you get to the point, bear with me now because I don't want to get too excited about this thing. You, 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 get, you get to a point, you get here and you start hoping for stuff. And in the meantime of hoping, you're hoping there's a part of the cycle there you got to stand, be patient, wait, you know, talk, uh, speak in faith over the thing you're hoping for. Call those things there. But you know, on that first cycle there where you, that, that, that patient cycle there where you don't have patience, that, that's when the enemy comes and says, man, that ain't going to work. Uh, you, you, might, you might need help doing that. Won't you go ahead and do this? Let's look at this in, in the Amplified. I'm going to read this in the Amplified, okay? Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteousness, and given a right standing with God, are we there? Through faith, let us grasp the fact that we have, we have, we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Keep going. Through him also we have our access introduction by faith into grace, the state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely, what did I say? Firmly See, safely. this is that first part of hope. This, this, this that hope cycle. We get right here, we start hoping for stuff, and we don't stand on faith. Amen. We don't stand on faith. We decide, well, okay, this is not happening quick enough. And I figured this would happen. You get everything else going on inside of here. Stood of, Lord, I thank you that I can do all things through Christ. I thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that this too should be. I think, start thanking God. Right here is where you got to stand. You got to stand like that tree. See, see, when that, when, I must, we'll come back to that. When that tree planted by the water, and if you're not rooted down, the enemy can come with, man, that ain't going to work. You might as well stop hoping for that. Man, that, 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 it's taking too long. But how many know God's timing is not your timing? He said, if you stand, he said, if you stand, you can be still. Wait on the Lord. Wait on him. If you trust, that's if you, if you trust and obey and depending on him. If you're not, then all this other stuff going to come at you. Go ahead and give God some help, and then maybe he needs your help. God don't need your help. God don't need your help. He said to stand still and just wait. Just wait on me. I'm, I'm working it out. You got See, we lose patience right here. We lose patience. Where am I? Through him also we have our access entry into the introduction by faith into this great state of God's favor in which we finally... As, Firmly and safely stand. He said, and let us rejoice. How many know when it ain't working or when, when that hope? Be, you don't rejoice. Man, I get frustrated. I've been hoping this thing would work. This is us. I figured it wasn't working. I, I didn't think this thing was going. Why are you there? You should be thinking, God, thank God, Lord. I thank you that you're making a way, Lord. I thank you that this situation, this thing I'm hoping for is coming to pass, God, because you said and start speaking the word of God on it. Start speaking the word. It has to change. It has to change. I'm telling you, when, I, when, when God showed me this last night, I put my, my wife get up early anyway. But man, I was tossing and turning. And God finally said, you need to go over to another room because me and you finna talk. And he showed me, he said, let us rejoice and exult in our hope and experience and enjoy the glory of God. What do we do? We whine, man. I don't know. I got to figure out. God don't need you to figure nothing out. If you trust in him, he already figured it out. He don't need you to figure nothing out. He don't. You know, you just, that's right. You got, but see, in order to be there, guys, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you belong to. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me. So I got to go to the source. I got to go to the source. Because, listen, me going to mess it up every time. And then we mess it up, and who we want to call? Oh, God, I knew I shouldn't have done that. Come on. 
It's that time for you to, to realize that the word of God is what you need to, com, com, to do your hope. with. By faith, you can do it. But if you're not speaking those faith things and the enemy got you speaking all this worldly stuff, trying to get this hope thing work, and then every now and then when you see it's not working, you want to grind over to the faith, stay, stand still. Stand still. Even though when the wind come and move your tree a little bit, if you're not firmly rooted, you're going to be uprooted. Meaning you're going to do what you want to do. Or you're going to try to do what you want to do. But once you're firmly planted and rooted in the word, I don't care what kind of circumstance, what kind of wind come by, what kind of storm come in your life, you have the word. Of God. You're rooted in Christ Jesus. It, can't be, it may bend you a little bit, but the word will straighten you right back up. I know I've been there, guys. It says, exalt in our hope and experience and enjoy the glory of God. Keep going. Moreover, let us also be fulfilled with joy now. Let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our suffering. Okay, so, and knowing that, knowing the pressure and the affliction and hardship produces patience. So while you're waiting, while you're hoping for this, and things ain't moving as fast as you want, and things, you're going to go, the Bible tells you you're going to go through some stuff. You're gonna you're gonna go through patience, and you're gonna you're gonna go through wondering why this and why this not happening. This not happening fast enough. But the Bible say, be patient, stand, and un, and under underswerving. Is that right? Underswerving endurance. Keep going, and endurance forfeit forfeit development, mature and character. Okay, so. So once you, once you realize with hope, once you realize, okay, stuff is happening, but I'm going to stand still. I'm going to stay in the word of God. It's going to move you on around to building a character in you, and that faith will grow in you because you're standing on the word of God. That faith will grow. And while that faith is growing, it's building character in you. You understand me? It's building character in you. But if you... Well, a lot of us, we, get, we don't get past that one part where we have to wait and stand still. I, I've been there. I know we, we, won't, we, get to the, we get there and we lose it. We lose it. Where if we just stand still, stay on in our faith realm, stay in our word of God, God you'll still see God start moving. And, and he's going to move for you because he loves you. He's our daddy. He wants to take care of us. But see, if you ain't dependent on him, and if you don't know him, then you're going to try to do you. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So, so you got to learn, in, in your hope cycle, while waiting on this hope with faith to, to come about, or things to happen in your life, you have got to have patience. You've got to stand firm. You've got to be in the word of God. You've got to trust that the word of God and know that the word of God will not fail. You got to know this. You, can, you can't doubt because doubt going to come in there. Uh, fear going to come in there. All these things are going to come. But the Bible says stand in faith. All these things going to come. I'm telling you guys, I know it. Because the end of the month come, stand in faith. Are you with me? Bills come, job come, things, life throws you all kind of stuff. But if if you know who you know, use what he has given you. He's given you his authority, and he's given you permission to use his son's name on any situation. Amen. And his name is above all names. Amen. His name is above all, all your situation. Anything you're facing, anything come your way, it, it's, it's through Christ Jesus that you can be overcomers. Are you with me? It says that hope to go to the next producers uh, habit. Go, go to the next first one. Here in this hope cycle also too, it, I tell you, it builds your confidence. Once you, once you get to a part with hope, once you pass that patience, once you see that, okay, God is blessing me, God is, God is good, it builds that confidence on you to learn how to use your faith. Then when the next situation come around, you know how to know this is not going to bother me because if God did it then, he, gonna, he can do it now. 
It, it'll build that confidence in you. But see, the, the thing is, we don't get that far because we don't use what he has given us. And you got to learn. You got to learn how to use the word of God for your benefit. It'll help you. I mean, I can't even tell you guys how much. You know, I used to hope, hope this and hope that. And Lord, I just, I hope the day be a good day. Then why not wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord had made and I will rejoice. I hope my job, I hope it be nice and smooth that my job was well, going to be smooth because great is he that's in me and I'm bringing smooth with me. I'm bringing joy with me. I'm bringing peace with me. You got to walk around like that with your hope. Stop hoping for anything when you got some faith to back it up. Stop it. Because the situation you're in now is your fault. You spoke it. You spoke it. That is a true fact. It is so true. I am a witness of it. What you say come out your mouth is you are, you are where you're at right now in your life because you spoke your life. <laughs> Newsflash. It's, it's all about you. It's all about what comes out your mouth. What comes out your mouth. It's all on you. God has given us, God has given us everything we need to deal with hope. And that's his word. We should, be not, we should not be walking around here hopeless. We shouldn't. We should not be hopeless. We shouldn't. Well, I don't think it'll work. If it's in the word of God, it's going to work. It has to work. Well, I hope this works. First, if you're hoping this works, then you don't know the word of God. Because if it's in here, it's going to work. It has to work. Why do I know that it has to work? Because everything works for the good, for those who love the Lord. So it has to work for me. I'm going I'm to stop hoping that it works. It got to work, Lord, because you said everything works for the good, if it's good. Now, I'm talking about if it's good. Because all good gifts come from the Lord. So it has to work. Are you with me? Yeah, hope is, hope is something we walk around here and use it just slangly, if I may say. But back your hope up with some faith behind it and watch what happens. And I challenge you, next time you want to spit out your mouth hope, spit some faith behind it. Give your hope some gas to go with it and watch what happens. I'm telling you guys, I... I'm doing it. And I see, I see the evidence of God doing things for me. It, you know, Rick said earlier, this word is so powerful. It's powerful. And the Bible tells, how do I know it's powerful? Because the Bible told me it's powerful than the two-edged sword. What else powerful than that? It's powerful. You know, I had a little issue at work today. And... Um, and I was real humble today because I had been meditating on the word. And I had a little issue today. And I, I told myself after the, after the person said what they said, I turned around and used the word. I said, you know what? God bless you. God bless you. And, and instantly she turned around. She said, James, I'm so sorry. I don't mean to yell at you like that. I could have. I could have, lady. You, you know, I could have. But the change in me. I use the word of God because he says those, those that harm or hurt, bless them. So all I say is, you know what, God bless you. I try to see, I put, I put the word to the test. Because, see, if he lie, he got to come off the throne. So if I put his word to the test, that victory every time. And I wait patiently, I stand on it. And it's not all the time that he come through, but I know he coming. I have patience, but us men, come on, we don't have patience sometimes. But he said, you got to have that patience. That's, that's part of the fruit of the spirit. And, and, you know, I learned, I'm not, where are you going there, Lord? If you learn, if you learn, I've learned that if I try my best or, or walk with what God has given me, which, which is the fruit of the spirit, if I try to learn to walk in that avenue, things just happen. Things just happen. My biggest challenge was to learn how to love like Christ loved. How do I love my enemy? Bless them. 
smile and say, because God loved them. Sort of like, man, man, I hope, I hope, because there used to be a time I was hoping on you, boy, but not the good hope. But now, you know, I just hope God bless you, overflow you tremendously. Let the, the enemy know he don't have no the victory in me. He, he can't come to me. Man, he can't mess with me. I got my sword. Do you have your sword? Where are you putting your hope? What do you hope? What, what's fueling your hope? What is fueling your hope? Are you using your hope just to hope? If you are, it's not going to work, guys. Put some faith with it. Put some faith with it. Amen? God is good. You know, um, hmm, yes, Holy Spirit. It says, hope defers make the heart sick. But when desire is fulfilled, it is tree of life. That's powerful. If, 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 you, if, you, if you're feeling hopeless or if you think if you think you don't have no hope, check yourself. Because God, God, God sent his son Jesus for you. That's your hope right there. God sent his son Jesus for you. So you shouldn't be happy. You shouldn't even think hopeless. But you walk around here, great as he that's in me, but you're thinking hopeless. The two don't go together. The enemy laughing at you. And then you trying to figure out, well, I don't know why this hope, why this, why this hope thing ain't working. Uh, it's just my luck. Now you want to add all this other stuff. <laughs> enemy say, I got him food. I got him food. He want to go get luck. How luck run? How luck works for you? It runs out. <laughs> I'm just saying, it runs out. It runs out, guys. And I, listen, when I was in the world, I thought, man, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. And all of a sudden, just my luck. Yeah. But now it's not. I'm blessed because the hope that I have in Christ Jesus. The hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Things, you know, some of you are going through some stuff that don't, nobody knows that you're going through but you and Christ Jesus. If you look to him, you'll come up out that stuff. If you look to him and look what he has done for you and look what he wants to give you and look what he wants to do for you and trust and believe in him, you'll come up out that stuff. Victorious. Through Christ Jesus. You can. You're walking around here talking about you can do all things through Christ Jesus, but you're hopeless. What's, what's up? How are you going to quote the scripture? How are you going to uh, sit here every Sunday and listen to this good teaching that we get and don't take advantage of it and use it? How, how can we? Because God knows we get some good teaching. Where, where are you at now? Where are you? in your hope meter. Hmm. Check your hope meter. Is it on empty? Some of it ain't even half full. How do I fill it up? Get in the word. Get in the word. He said, you know how I know it'll work? Because he said he gave it overflow. You know how I know it worked too? Because he said my cup will run out of over. Get in the word. You should be able to, anything come at you, you should have a scripture for it. <laughs> Got quiet real quick. You should. You should. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't know this at first, but I've learned how to, to get into the word, to find what I need to walk my daily walk. I, I find enough for just this day, Lord. I find, I need, let your will be done this day. I need all my hope in you, Christ, this day. Because he said, I know the plans I have for you. So why are you worried about Friday when it's just Monday? You better find out what he got for you on Monday. Today, Lord. But see, the enemy wants you so busy, your hope weighed over here, and you don't forgot about your hope for today. As men, we, we like that. We want to plan things out. 
You better stop trying to plan things out and look to God because he said he knows the plans he has for you. Check with him. When I tell you, guys, when I tell you, when you wake up and got that first fresher air, check with him right then. It works for me. Check with him. Before I even throw that leg off the bed, check with him right then. Because he might say, not yet, James. Just wait. I want to spend some more time with you. But no, I got to get there by 8. It's only 6.30. So where are you spending your time with? Who are you spending your time with? The more I found out, the more that I spend with Christ Jesus, the more grounded, confident I get. The more. You know, well, I just don't have time. Take time. He gave you a whole 24 hours. You can't find a little bit of time to spend with the, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, Holy Spirit, thank you. And, wait, I hear you. Well, you don't want to go there and rush through him. Okay, well, I'll spend a few minutes. Thank you, Lord, Lord, Lord. I just praise you, God. Got to go. Come on. Take time with Daddy. Take time with your father, guys. That's where your hope is at. Walk by faith. Use his word. Talk to him, Lord, you know what, Lord? And if you have a situation and, and you just you just puzzled about it, God said, I'll give you wisdom. Ask him, Lord, what should I do about this? What do you want me to do about this, Lord? I tell him, so, Lord, you knew the plans that you have for me. Now, here's the situation. I'm pretty sure you already know about the situation, but I'm, I'm kind of, I need to know about this situation. That's what it's called, a relationship. But most of us, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, we quit this. Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, I got to think about this one. Lord, I got to do this. And God said, now, why don't you just check with me first? Check with me first. I could have saved you all that worrying because it say to stop worrying. I could have saved him all that fear because it say don't fear. I could have saved him a whole bunch of time. The next thing you know, you're not feeling good because you don't fear it up this and you don't worry about this. And oh, next thing you know, how, man, I'm all stressed out. What are you doing there for? Why are you going there for? When the Bible, when the Bible is stress free, his words are stress free. There's hope. There is hope in the word of God. I, I encourage you guys, check your hope meters. Check that word hope that come out your mouth from now on. Stop hoping for stuff if you don't got the word to back it up. <laughs> yeah, stop hoping for stuff if you ain't got the word to back. Some of you are just hoping for stuff that's not, that ain't even nowhere in the word. And then you wonder why you ain't getting it. Because it's not a plan that God had for you. You know, you, you, got to, you got to line yourself up to receive the blessings. You can't go out here and then come back here and check me and then go back and you got to li stay lined up. Stay lined up for the, for the spirit of God. I think we, we just had in the minister manners, I think Pastor Kurt talked, be led by the spirit, by his spirit, not your thinking. Who is you? The renewing of the mind, that's what we got to do. We got to continually renew your mind. Continually renew it with this word. Stop talking. Well, I remember how it used to be. Why are you bringing up the old man? The Bible said the old man died. But you want to bring up all his memories. Renew your mind. Check your hope meter. Why is this working like Why is this not working like this? Maybe I do need to check my hope meter. Maybe I need to check where I am with my faith. Now faith for things hoped for. Wonder why he put them two together. Because they go together. They go together. One can't work without the other. And be victorious, I should say. They can, you know, you can use hope all by yourself and see where, it, let me just talk to me, see where it got you. Are you with me, guys? 
Check your hope meter. Stop using that word hope just without, without some fire behind it. And watch how God will do. Watch what God will do for you. David, uh, David, Abraham, they all hoped, hoped in Christ Jesus. They put their trust and dependency in Christ Jesus. Stop trying to do it, men. Stop trying to do it. Yeah, you could be a man without trying to look like you all, you know, and then the inside, the inside spirit man just is weak. You want to get all buffed up, look good on the outside, but what's on the inside? What's really in the inside? Because if what's in the inside going to come out, it's going to come out. You can make it look all pretty, but God knows. Renew your mind. Change your way of thinking to the word of God. I am a true witness right here, guys. It works. It, and, I, and I'm doing it day by day because I used to think, well, down the road, I'll be like Mr. Rick. Down the road. No, no, no. Today, I'm going to be like Jesus. I'm going to worry about today. I wasn't designed to be like him. God has this, my, own, my own purpose for me. He has your own purpose for you. Find out what the will of God is for you. Lord, why is my purpose? Ask him. If you, some of you have, might have kids and they'll ask you, Daddy, why so-and-so, so-and-so? You could go to your dad and ask him too, Daddy, why so-and-so, so-and-so? Why am I going through this? What am I doing wrong? You know, my thing is, Lord, search my heart. Guide my feet. I need help, Lord. T touch, so show enough, touch my mind. Especially being men, because the enemy got some stuff for you, boy, to make you convinced real quick that, oh, well, that ain't going to work. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Well, guess what? You're not me. You're not me. And I'm not going to, because remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And God is not a God of confusion. So if you're going through stuff and you're all confused about it, check your hope meter. Check your faith meter. God is not a God of confusion. You're going through some stuff and you think it's confusing and you know it's confusion, you better check. That's not God. That's the enemy doing what he do best. But we as men, men of faith, men of God, should know how to defeat that enemy. But if you're struggling, get into the word. And renew your mind. And God, they said, <laughs> I was talking to my brother, and uh, he was telling me something. About, he said, man, oh, I just can't wait to God open the gates of, of the windows of heaven and pour down the blessings on me. I said, man, he already opened up the windows. Do you already walk in the blessing? Y'all right. waiting on the blessing to come. God said, I've already blessed him. But he don't know how to walk in it. Do you know how to walk in your blessing? Walk like you're blessed. Speak like you're blessed. Talk like you're blessed. Because you're blessed. We have the greater one, Jesus. And, and when you, you know what? When, when, I, when I come and realize that he loved me so much. He loved me so much that he took all those stripes and beats for me. When I really got that down in me, ain't no devil in hell can, can confuse me or convince me any otherwise. And once I start renewing my mind to the word and speaking that word and, 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 and learning and, and the teaching that we get, once that stuff get down on you and get that revelation knowledge and that wisdom and spiritual understanding, we got it, guys. We got it. It's here for the taking. What are you going to do, take it or just sit here and let it pass over you? Where's your hope? By faith. We could, we could, we could, we could sound real good quoting scriptures and everything, but... James said, you got to be a doer. You got to be a doer. And that's what it's for. It's for you to do. Can, can, can you imagine this? And, and, and God laid this in my spirit. 
God created this whole world with words. Dude, when you really, really realize that, and then he gives you the same words, he gives you his word that has power that you can create or speak to and things that happen for you. But where's your faith meter? Where's your hope meter? Where's your belief meters? Check your meters. Well, I believe it to a certain extent. It don't say it'll work to a certain extent. It said it'll work. See, and that's the enemy. We want to come, we want to come and add our little non-50 cent piece in. Well, it'll work for some of them. It will work for Joe or work for Mike. If it's the word of God. I think it's God is not a respectable person. No, he said, you know, he, he don't pick me to do better cause, uh, than you. He gave us all the same measure of faith. Well, I can't wait till I get like him. Well, get busy. Do what he do. <laughs> I can't wait till I learn scriptures like he do. Read them. I, I was told just the other day, just the other day, this girl told me at work, James, oh man, you know those scriptures. Man, how do you know those scriptures? She just don't know. I read and I read and I read them and I read them over and over. It's just like these songs we sang in church over and over. Now when they come on, you know them. I found that out. The more, just read them, just read them. A little bit at a time, meditate on I used to be confused when they tell me, oh, meditate on the scripture. How am I going to sit here and meditate on this? God told me in my spirit, try it. And guess what? It worked. It worked. If we do what we're taught to do, especially with our pastors that we have, and we do what we're taught to do to Christ Jesus, it has got to work for you guys. It will work. Trust me. I'm, listen, you're looking at one that God showed up. And some of y'all know me. God showed down a turn. I thought there was no hope. But Lord, look at him. I'm still here. I'm still here. Some of my friends going on, but I'm still here. Why? It's because I was started to renew my mind. I start trusting and depending on God daily, hour by hourly. My wife sometimes asks me, James, you say something? Nope, I'm talking to the Lord. I talk to him. You got to talk to him. I get, I mean, we have challenges in the life. We have things come up against us. He did not say being a Christian is going to be easy. He didn't say that you're going to not have troubles. He said that you're going to overcome them. He said that he has a way for you to escape from them. So, yes, you're going to run into issues. You're going to run into things, but get in the word. You'll see what to do and to say or how to handle those things. Especially nowadays with the way the world is, you better have something. You better, your hope better be in line. Your hope better be in line, especially nowadays. You better have the right hope and not the hope with luck. I'm just saying, guys, it, it work. Hope is, is the hope in Christ Jesus, the hope that Christ has given us to stand on. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. By faith, through faith, speak the word of God over your situation, guys. And look for it to happen. See it happening. See it happening. Uh, I don't know. It might. See it happening. Take might out. It will happen. Speak it. The Bible says speak those things into existence. They don't say waver, it's just speak to it. He said, yeah, I give you the authority to speak. Not whine. Oh, I'll just leave that alone. Not complain, just leave that one alone. Not, not uh, it might. Speak with boldness. That thing got to, you got to get out of my way. Speak with boldness to your, to your situation, the word of God. Expect. Expect it. Don't, don't, don't sit there, expect with my, 
Expect it. Yeah, it's going to happen. It may not happen within the next hour, but it's going to happen. I tell my wife all the time, my four bedroom, three bath, double car garage, open concept, swimming pool, fenced in yard, and provisions to pay for it is on its way. That's my house. It's on its way. And I've been looking at houses. The devil looked out when that's $637,000. Lord, I need one to 700. I need a bigger one than that. What's your expectation? God, don't limit your God. You got a big God. Well, I don't make but this an hour, and this time an hour, and this a year, and this how much out of a year. I got to stay in this budget. Says who? I'm just learning these things, but says who? My God is a big God. He says, I'll supply all your needs. But do you believe that? Well, Lord, Lord, I, I got a bill here to $70. If you could just give me $75. No, Lord, give me $175,000 for this little $75 bill. bill for, I could be a blessing to somebody else. You got to speak it. Don't look for a little bit from God. Look for a whole lot. He wants to give. He already. He wants to give you the world. He wants to give it to you. He wants to give to His children. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Check your hope meter, guys. If I don't tell you anything else, check your hope meter. Back your hope meter up with faith, with the Word of God. Stop just hoping for luck. Hope for expectancy that it's going to happen because I'm standing on the word of God and have patience while you're waiting and rejoice through the waiting. Stop complaining through the waiting. Don't look at how it look on the outside. You understand me? Don't look. Don't let it appear. It's, you know these mirrors on the car say odds may appear smaller than what they are. Or lodging or whatever. See it in that. See it in your spiritual eye. See yourself having what you desire to have, getting what you desire to get. See it. Once you start seeing it, you'll see what happened. It'll start coming to pass. Amen. Amen. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord. I just thank you for your word, Lord. I just thank you that the hope in you, just, Father God is the hope that you want us to walk in. Lord, I thank you as we walk in this hope by faith to Heavenly Father God, that you will lead us and guide us, God. I bind anything the enemy try to plot plan. We already know that he's a defeated foe. I thank you to Heavenly Father God that the word will go, that has gone forth tonight, that these guys will walk in the hope that you're calling them to do, to speak your word to Heavenly Father and walk by faith. Now, Lord, as we bless this food, we ask that you Bless it, Lord, that it be a nourishment to our bodies, and we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, let's eat. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>